with a standing ovation, let's put our hands together as we invite the man of God, Pastor Morris. Put your hands together. Let's give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man in our own, in our image, according to our likeness. Somebody say likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created uh, them. But then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Praise God. I want to also uh, refer to First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible says, First Peter says, Wives, likewise, some be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe the chaste conduct accompanied by fear. All right. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, and putting on fine apparel. And we have a lot of that this morning. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. The next verse. He says, for in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husband. Go to verse 4 and, and give us, in verse 4, give us Amplified Classic and then TPT and then I'll preach. Amen. The Bible says, but let it be inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. Verse 5, he says, for it was thus that the pious women of old who hoped in God were accustomed to beautify themselves and were submissive to their husbands, adapting themselves to them as themselves secondary and dependent on them. Go to verse 4 again and give us TPT. Let your true beauty come from inner personality, not a focus on the external. For lasting beauty comes from a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is precious in God's sight and is much more important than the outward adornment of elaborate hair, jewelry, and fine clothes. Verse 4. Holy women of long ago who had set their hopes on, in God beautified themselves with lives lived in deference to their own Husband's authority. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you speak through me. Encourage a lady. Strengthen a lady. Heal a lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, that power that heals broken hearts, that power that uh, brings strength in the inner person. Oh, that revelation that reveals who we are in you and gives us an identity and a true name and revelation in Christ. Pray that that power will permeate in every corner of this room. And I pray that there will be a revelation to every lady seated here today. For the glory and honor of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible tells us something as we go back to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, looking at God's initial agenda, initial plan. Because although man fell into sin, the plan of God never changed. 
God still was able to accomplish what he intended through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. So the God's plan and God's purpose has not changed. He, what he desired in the book of Genesis chapter 1, when he was creating a man, he still desires and he is working on it even right now on the earth as we are speaking. Amen. The Bible says when God spoke, he says, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. Meaning there would be something that looked like God in the man that was to be created. But the Bible says that he created male and female. He created male and female in the image and in the likeness of God. And the reason for that is that the image and the likeness of God required both male and female to fully express that as a man, you cannot fully express uh, uh, the, the, the likeness or the image of God. It requires a female version. It requires a woman to be able to portray certain aspects of God that a man cannot be able to express. Are you following me? Amen. Are you still with me? The Bible says that both of them were blessed, that when God gave them dominion, he gave dominion to both male and female. He gave dominion to both of them. He blessed both of them. So the difference between a man and a woman is not in capacity, is not in dominion, is not in blessing. Because the Bible says a male and female, they were both given dominion. Hallelujah. So whatever it is that a man can be able to dominate and, and have authority or be, have dominion in, the woman also has the capacity to have dominion in that particular area because they were blessed at the same time. The same words that were spoken and the same blessing that was given to the man is the blessing that was given to the woman. Hallelujah. So the difference between a man and a woman, therefore, is not in dominion, is not in blessing. Praise the name of Jesus. And that is why it's important for you ladies to arise and go out there and do whatever it is that God wants you to do. Go out there and succeed. Go out there and express what the dream and the vision that God has put in your heart. Go out there and have dominion because you are also blessed for dominion. You have the blessing. You have been given the capacity to prosper, the capacity to succeed, the capacity to do well. It is inbuilt in you as it was given to Adam so was it given also to the woman hallelujah so it's not about whether a woman is blessed or not it's not about whether a woman has a dominion or not both of them male and female created he them amen and well, as I said, that the image of God and the likeness of God, and God was not satisfied. He knew if he made a male, the male will be restricted, confined, limited in certain aspects to express who God really is. Therefore, he created a woman. Because that which the man cannot express, the woman will fully express. And together, living in unity and living in harmony, they will be able to express the picture of God. Are you following? Hallelujah. So there are aspects of God, ladies, that require you to express. For example, the Bible talks about El Shaddai. El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. He talks about El Shaddai, the almighty God. If you go into the root meaning of that word, he talks about God as the multi-breasted one, the God with the a thousand breasts. He talks about the nurturing nature of God, the committed nature of God, the protective nature of God. And yet, that name of God directly refers to the feminine aspect. Are you hearing me? Because within a woman is the capacity to nurture. A woman will have five kids and still be willing to go back. That's strength. Yeah, yeah. They will go through prolonged labor and still be willing to go through another labor. I, I, are you getting? He's talking about a patience that God has given a woman that a man cannot have. 
A man cannot be patient to nurture five kids. Yeah? A man will resign. A man will give up the kids for adoption. You know, because there, there is something that is built, within, built in within men, uh, within women. There is a patience, there is a resilience, there is a strength. Such that when the Bible is talking about a weaker vessel, it's not referring to inner strength. It's talking about tenderness. It's talking about tenderness. That the woman is strong yet tender. Or, or Are you getting me? That, that the woman is gentle and tender yet resilient. Are you getting? That the woman is, is, is tender but strong in certain areas. They're called weaker vessel, but they are patient. Weaker vessel, but they can keep on going and going and going. Amen. There are aspects of God, ladies, and this is what I'm trying to tell you, that required a woman to be able to express. The Bible says in Isaiah 49 and verse 15, God is using, is challenging Israel to show the Israel his faithfulness. And the best example he uses is the example of a mother that is nursing a child. Hallelujah. So when God is looking for an example of faithfulness and an example of commitment and devotion to his people, he looks for the example or, or, or the symbol of a woman. He says, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion in the son of a womb? These are the words that are coming from God through Isaiah. And God is saying that a woman cannot be able to forget a natural woman. I'm not talking about a woman in dysfunction. I'm not talking about a, a, a woman with issues. I'm talking about a woman as they were created by God does not have the capacity to forget a nursing child. Because within the woman, there are mechanisms to remind her of her child. And yet, it's not just about the, the physical uh, uh, aspect of it. But he's saying that within her, she has such compassion that she cannot be able to leave a child like that. That the compassion, meaning within the heart of God, of, of, of when God wants to show her the example of compassion, she takes, he takes the woman as an example of his compassion for Israel. And he says, yes, yeah, surely that woman may forget, yet I will not forget you. That I will remember you as a woman would remember the child. That I will have compassion on you as a woman would be able to have compassion. How many women, how many times have you forgiven your husbands? So God picks you as an example of himself. So he does not refer to a man when he's talking about this compassion. That a woman is a symbol of resilience. So he likens himself to this woman who cannot leave a child. Some of you know how much you have gone through just to raise that baby. Because you got the baby, the father left. But you don't have the option to leave. Amen. Some of them are finishing school. And it's been you single-handedly feeding them, clothing them, taking them to school, taking care of them. Where is the father? Where is the man? He, he left. He checked out. Or even if he's there, he doesn't take responsibility. Why? Because there is a nature within you that God has put. And he's put to serve his purpose, to remind us of his faithfulness. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. So there is a side of God, there is an aspect of God that comes through very clearly through a woman. And in the new creation especially, because you're talking about new creation ladies, in the new creation, this aspect has been not only restored in Christ, but it has also been strengthened by the workings of the Holy Ghost. That there is a way, the Bible says that when the Spirit of God is poured out, there will be how he works in your sons and in your daughters. That he will not just work in the sons. And that's why I don't understand why people have a problem with ladies preaching. Because if the God can fill them with the Holy Spirit, and if they can prophesy, why can't they preach? Are you getting my point? 
Amen. He says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. He says that there will be an expression both in the male and in the female. When they are known that the power of the Holy Ghost is poured, God will require, will need to see the manifestation of the workings of the Spirit, not only in the men, but also in the women. That is why if you look at the book of Acts, they were men and they were women. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there is that image and there is that aspect of that woman in God, woman in Christ, that has been restored in Christ, that in Christ that you've been put together, that in Christ there are things that Adam might have lost, but you have gotten it, you have been, they have been restored to you in Christ. And the Bible tells us that as, as, as people that are now born again, both male and female, both men and women, that we ought to put on that new man that is recreated after God in God's likeness in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. He says that is something that is there, it's been restored, but it's your responsibility to put it on. Amen. The Bible says that you put on means that you wear the way you wear a gown, that you wear the way you wear a cloak. Praise God. I'm feeling, um, it's like I'm starting to warm up. Amen. Um, my engine is getting hotter, but I want to control myself and teach and then we are going to pray. Somebody's going to be healed here today. In the name of, let me say it again. Somebody's going to be healed here today. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there is this new man that Christ has brought forth through his death and resurrection. And we are told, put him on or put her on. Don't continue in the old broken one. Don't continue in the one that was in sin. But put on the new man that has been recreated in true righteousness and holiness in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that when God, or in through Jesus Christ, brought forth his church, when he brought forth this church and the church began, although the church is strong, or that the church is powerful, when the Bible is trying to explain to us and to describe to us the nature of the church, the Bible does not use the image of a man, but he uses the image of a woman. And the church is called the bride of Christ. Why? It's because he's talking about how the church is supposed to be functioning. That the church is supposed to be getting children and taking care of those children. That the church is supposed to be compassionate and resilient in the, in the midst of, of a, a system that is hostile. In the midst of a system that, that, that is not so conducive, but we are still supposed to be resilient. Praise the name of Jesus. He talks about uh, 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 the, the, the church as the bride of Christ. Meaning that the church is the bone and the flesh of Jesus Christ. Just like Adam looked at Eve and said, this is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. That the church here on the earth right now is the bone and the flesh of Jesus Christ. As we continue on, we see that the woman is a symbol of humility and submission. It is easier to get a woman to break and humble even in the presence of God not to get a man. You will have to work twice as hard. You will have to, to sing twice as, well, as hard to cause men to start to break in the presence of God. There is that tenderness that is within the hearts of the woman. And that is what Peter is telling the ladies. Please don't lose it. Don't lose it. Praise God. And I will come back to that. Amen. Yeah, there is that submissive aspect. And the Bible says, moving from that submissive aspect of the, the Bible tells us that men ought to love their wives. It mean, it tells me something, it tells me something by implication, that the woman was created to be loved. Now let me repeat it again, that the woman blossoms best when she's loved. She shines best when she's loved. The, the amens are few, but anyway, I'm going to preach anyway. That the woman thrives best when she's loved. But it tells me something more, honey. That the woman was created in a way to receive love. But when a woman is hurt, when a woman is bitter, when a woman's heart has been broken again and again, they become numb and they, become, they, they, they are not receptive to that which causes them to blossom. And therefore, sometimes I've looked into the eyes of many beautiful women as I do counseling, as I pray for them as a pastor. Yes, outwardly they are beautiful, but the 
eyes. You know you can't hide the eyes. You can put the lashes, you can put the eye shadow, what do you call it? Mascara or what? You can put whatever that one. But if you look at the eyes, you will see pain. You will see this woman's heart has been broken because they say that the eyes are the window to the soul. Sometimes I have seen women that are laughing outwardly. They are smiling from ear to ear, but their eyes are weepy. They are crying. The eyes are crying. They have tried, as my wife was saying, to camouflage it. Why? It's because where they expected to receive love, they received pain. Where they expected to receive strength, they, they, they were broken. Amen. So a woman is created to be loved. It means she needs to know how to receive affection. And, 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 and I, know, I, I, I know you do, but you know, a woman thrives best in an environment of love. That is why husbands are being told, love your wives. Because if you don't love your wife, there are aspects of your wife you will not see. There are strengths of your wife you will not see. There are capacities of your wife you will not see. There is a beauty of your wife you will not see because that beauty comes up when a woman is loved. Ah. Thank you. So a woman, when a woman has been in a place where she has received something that looked like love, but it's not love, something that was fake, something that was not genuine all right they start to get protective they start to hold to cut to close their hearts they start to come to a place where they are not they, 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 they are not as receptive and get guess what as they close their hearts and their hearts become numb and they become stiffened within them they are not just blocking the people from coming close to them but they are blocking something from expressing from outside let me tell you something when you build a fence the fence it's not just uh, preventing people from coming outside in, but it's also preventing something from coming inside out. Are you hearing me? Yeah, and that is why it's important for a woman to be healed. Yes, I know your heart was broken, but you need to be healed. Yes, I know you were jilted, and I know you were betrayed, and I know people have done and said bad things, and, and it has left your heart, you know, numb and, and, and wounded and bruised and scarred. But daughter of, uh, daughter, let me just call you daughter of Zion, it's time for you to be healed so that the true you can rise, so that uh, you, you rise up again. And and become the, the, the amazing gem that God created you to be so that you can be able to shine and sparkle because that which you are covering yourself to protect yourself is also covering your tenderness and covering your true beauty and covering your true light from shining. That is why healing of the women is important. I preach to the men. I preach to the men. You know, for six months, the, the brothers are here. For six months we were dealing with the wounds of men. And the wounds of men come from their fathers. The wounds of men come from their fathers. Either without fathers or fathers that had dysfunction. But when you look at ladies, the wounds of ladies are coming from relationships. Somebody who pretended to present love. When you opened up the package, you realize it's not love. And you were you stung. You were wounded. You are broken hearted. It was camouflaged as love, but it's not love. Because you are made for love. You are made to trust. But when you trust the wrong people, that is why, lady, before you, you, you say, I do, please pray. And can, can I tell you something? And when you fall in love, fall in love with your eyes open. <laughs> Mighty God, there is nothing. Listen, me, I, I am not an advocate of this thing that love is blind. No, 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 no. I'm looking. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. The fruits don't lie. If the guy is mistreating you while you're still dating, um, uh, if the guy is, still, is lying to you when you're still dating, you know this is what I tell the ladies, if the guy is taking you on a date and he's telling you to lie to your parents, the guy is going to lie to you. 
When, when, when you move in and you get money, the guy is going to be lying to you. So when you're falling in love, fall in love with your eyes wide open. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't give your heart fully. Amen. No, 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 no. You take that guy through probation. Mpeleke probation. Sijuta mpa miezi ngapi. Lakini, take them. Why? It's because when, when women commit, they commit. When they give their heart, they give their heart. Praise the name of Jesus. When they open their heart, they open their heart. Why? It's because they are created to trust. Can you think? That you'll go to a lady, talk to her for a few weeks, and then she's willing to change her name. She's willing to even move in with you. She doesn't even know how you behave at night. She doesn't know whether you're a night runner. She doesn't know whether you talk to yourself. She doesn't even know any detail. Most of those details. She's saying, yes, I will go with you. And she's changing her name. At Nipeleke Kwa Dio, Nipeleke Kwa Chief, to Kasainizo Makaratasi. Now she starts to call herself after your name. That is called trust <laughs> oh ladies are you are you getting this oh yeah 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 so before you open that heart before you give your heart to a man please open your eyes don't be desperate in fact i tell you better break a relationship that than a break a marriage Because many of you got hurt because you ignored a lot of red flags. Until love covered a multitude of sin. <laughs> so the guy is playing you and then you are quoting scripture that love covers a multitude of sin. You are made for love. And if you're going to be falling in love, please pray about it first and, and get to know this is the real thing you're looking for. Hallelujah. And you can tell. You can tell. Hmm? You can tell because this guy is not just fixated about your body. Because ladies, please, again, when you're in a relationship, don't, don't flaunt your body fast. Because a guy wants to know if I'm going to get into a relationship with a lady, what is she offering? All right? So you're not going to show him that the best foot forward you have to offer is your body. Because that's what good men do. Whatever you offer is what they take. No, no, you got, you, you got to tell them, if you're going to fall in love with me, it's the entire package. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, even if you're driving a car and you're go going for a date, work a gari kando. Take Uber. So that you're not showing that guy that, that which I'm bringing forward, that which, which is the preface, the introductory page is my car, is the money I have. Because if you do so, you're going to be complaining that this guy is not paying bills, you're the one doing everything. You, you present yourself as a lady who needs to be taken care of. Don't, don't go out there and show this guy, actually, I've got it made. I can take care of myself. Eish. Then why do you need him? There's a lady who came many years to me for counseling and said, Pastor, I don't know what's going on. This guy does nothing. I do everything. I do this. I do this. I pay even the DSTV he watches. I pay for him even the gym. I told him, I told her, that's where the problem is. You have not left for him to do anything. From the get-go, the guy needs to know that this girl needs taking care of. And I'm not talking about you giving him a budget every time you meet. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you not presenting yourself as all together, that, that, that you don't need anything. I've got it every, every corner. No, no, no. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So that when the guy comes, he comes knowing this is a relationship which will have give and take. That there is what is expected of him and there is what you are offering. Praise the name of Jesus.
Today I'm not talking about relationships. Let me continue. So a wounded woman becomes numb and protective because of fear of being betrayed and being hurt again. So that lovable creature of God, created for love, becomes stiff and angry and bitter and wounded and scarred. So scarred that you can't even tell her, her true personality. What was she like before she was wounded? What was she like before she was hurt? What was she like before, you know, men came in and broke her heart? What, what was she like? You can't tell anymore. But I want to thank God because in Christ Jesus, there is that possibility of restoration. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. So women are created to receive love. And for the brothers who are here, and for those who are eavesdropping behind there, please love your woman. You might exchange a few words, but even after you exchange a few words, let her know she's loved. That's not something you can leave to guesswork. No, 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 you can't leave to guesswork. Many years ago, a woman told me, this guy doesn't tell me he loves me. Kimuuliza na niambia, li niambia siku ya arusi, ya kichange mind ata niambia. No, 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 no. Are you getting? So also for the married women that are here, don't let your husband start to wonder whether you respect him. Because men have something that is called an ego. And that ego is hungry for respect and honor. That's how men spell love. Are you getting me? So don't... Let him start to wonder, am I even respected here? No, 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 no. Let it be clear. As he makes it clear to you that he loves you and demonstrates that affection and love, you also make it clear to him and demonstrate that respect and honor. Praise God. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, how much time do I have? Amen. Yeah? Okay. In Genesis... Chapter 2, verse 23, the Bible says, When God brought Eve to Adam, Adam was asleep, so God brought Eve to Adam. When Adam first opened his eyes and saw this beautiful creature in front of, of him, his first reaction was, This is surely flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. So, what did he see first? He first saw the outward. Men look on the outside. So when we are saying don't adorn yourself, we are not saying that you walk around with uh, wearing stuff that, you know, misrepresent you. No, 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 no. We, we, that's not what we mean. We mean take care of yourself, but focus more on the inside. Are you getting? Because that's what Adam saw. Adam saw, he said, I, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. I'm going to go a bit into, into relationship issues and then I promise you I'll stop there. Ladies, when you start to go on a date with a guy, don't name yourself. Because it's Adam who said this one now. This is now the flesh of my flesh. Ngoja akuite girlfriend yake. Usianze kusema ah by the way mini girlfriend yake. No no no. Let it come from <laughs> Yeah, what I say aseme kama we ni fiance. Eh, usijikatie kabla ya kukatiwa. Hapana, wacha kwanza akukatie ndio akuite wewe ni fiance. Ama akuite wewe ni wife. <laughs> Because what he calls you is how he will treat you. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. If he has never called you it, you are not it. <laughs> if he has never called you it, you are not it. So everything else was brought before him. He never called anyone. And I know those were animals. He never called any one of them flesh of his flesh. But when he said, wow. This is now flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. And later he says, you shall be the mother of all the living. And your name shall be Eve. All those names came from Adam. 
Hallelujah. So when you go out for coffee, <laughs> don't save on your phone. After the first date, I'm a your number, unaandika boy fee. Amen unwa China pizza alafu shaandika boy fee hapana let him name first subiri tuliza ball amen relax slow amen because sometimes men need time don't hurry because when you start naming yourself the guy is going to be spooked the guy is going to be afraid he's going to be uh, tra- interpret it as pressure huyo ananipa pressure Huyu sasa ataleta ata ataenda leta wardrobe yake kwangu you know yeah, yeah i mean the guy is going to interpret like you're installing yourself as his queen and he has not nominated you let it come from his because if he calls you that then you know that's what he's been thinking about but if you suggest it he will start to think about it Are you t- Is it sinking? Yes. Because this thing cannot be assumed. That is why people are getting into relationships and then they assume things the guy has not even said anything then they they break after some time and the lady is thinking me I thought I, I thought something was happening. I thought something was cooking here. I think we were go- I thought we were going somewhere. And a guy didn't even say anything let him to be the one to say where we are where is this relationship heading i know some of them can take a whole eternity to say it one as if you will but let it come from him because that is how he will be committed to it he will not say ah by the way mimi unajua mimi ni pressure to bana this lady man kila sana nitumia text message and then you listen where are we going where is this thing going ah. yeah. who are we ati who are we hey atakuuliza kwani who do you think we are and then you tell me i thought we are an item they say yeah we are an item you're right we are an item <laughs> hmm? It's important that it comes from you from him it has to come from the man <laughs> hallelujah can i go on don't give him a baby if he doesn't want because the men of this generation are very slippery even they will leave you with a baby in fact hata saa zingine hata kuja kumuona hospitali we are working with a hardened breed of men who will sire children and not take care of them so my friend my sister my daughter whichever name i can call you all right don't give the guy a baby if he does not want a baby thinking that if you give him a baby itarakisha maneno hoi kuna wengine warakisha angwi si ndio kuna wengine hawafanyagi nini hawarakisha angwi are you getting me i better move from that point because it's, the atmosphere is changing So let him call you what he sees. If he sees a bone of his bones, he will call it. If he sees flesh of his flesh, that's what he will call it. Praise God. But after he has seen Eve, it is later that he discovers that this flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone has a certain inside beauty that is greater than even what he saw with the eyes. And that is where the real power of a woman lies. <laughs> you ask Samson. This guy who killed heaps upon heaps, he says thousands upon thousands with the jawbone of an ass was dis- 
armed by a tender girl. This girl was so powerful that caused him to break a covenant with God. Who's Jesse? Women are powerful. Their ability to persuade is not in argument and contention. It's in gentleness. My wife can convince me more through tenderness than through whatever that is. Through raising voices and, and, and banging doors. No, no. That won't work because I become defensive. I interpret it as warfare. I interpret it as battle. And you don't want to take men into the battlefield because that's what they are created for. Men are warriors, they are builders, they are fighters. And if you can be able to nurture your man to be a fighter, he's going to go out there, fight the world for you and bring you the spoil. Throughout the Bible, it is men who fought. So when you start to bring battles into your house, you are taking the man into his natural domain, his natural territory. This guy is created to fight. But instead of doing so, disarm him with your tenderness. Disarm him with your tenderness. You know, you disarm him. Are you hearing? That's what, that's what Samson did. He said, unataka siri zangu, takupatia zote. Hata zile ujauliza, takuambia. Because of this girl, who is just stroking his head, his hair. Inaone kana leo umechoka. Utakunyua nini? Eh? Utakunyua baridi ama moto? Eh? Unataka iwe natanga wizi? Ama unataka... <laughs> By the time uh, um, Samson knew what he was saying, the secret he had never told any living person, he told this girl called Delilah. Delilah did not um, twist him. The, the, Delilah did not man manipulate him. Delilah did not coerce him. Delilah used the strength of a woman, which is her tenderness. Can I tell you, ladies, we don't want to be two men in the house. No. There's something that moves men in your tenderness, in your gentleness. Don't lose that. We're in a day that men, we men want to be like men. No, no, no. Stay ladies. Stay as a lady. One else if we're son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So there is that inner beauty that is greater than what is outward. Because the Bible says the outward fades. The outward will change. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but you know it will change. It will change. One day you look at your old photos and not believe yeah, that this is what is happening. It will happen. Amen. But there is the one the Bible calls incorruptible. That that one doesn't change with time, doesn't change with age, it doesn't change with babies, it doesn't change with whatever happens, that it remains pure and remains upright and strong. <laughs> Hallelujah! The Bible says that one endures. And that is where the, your real power ladies lies. Amen. That is inside. Somebody say inside. That inner beauty is so powerful, it can melt the hardest heart. The Bible says that women, that when you put on this, heart, this inside beauty, that even without a word, you can cause a man to believe. You can cause a man to believe. With that inward beauty, a man, a man can go and work for a woman. You remember Jacob? Yeah, Jacob worked for Rachel for 14 years. And the guy was not discouraged a little bit. It's because apart, he saw the, the beauty of Rachel and he wept. But later he discovered, man, this girl is so beautiful inside. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to say some sensitive things. Am I allowed? Yes. Amen. It melts the hardest heart. This inner beauty is what can make the man swim across the ocean for you. That inner beauty. Mm. Hallelujah. 
So first man can see the body of a woman, it pleases the eyes. But this inner beauty is what really pleases the heart. Sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll look at a guy and wonder, man, this guy was, was, was in a relationship with such a beautiful woman, such a beautiful girl, at what speaking. What happened? What happened? Because it's, it's, it's this inner beauty that satisfies the heart of a man. The Bible says in 1 Peter, as I begin to close, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1, Amen. That that man can be worn without a word. Eh? That even a man who does not obey the word, they without a word may be worn by the conduct of the wife. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us as we look at that scripture, the Bible tells us that ladies, that inner beauty, that inner strength is an ornament. It is a gem. It is the true jewel which is not corruptible. That's what the Bible says, that that inner beauty is not just precious to man. But it is also of a great price to God. That is what God cherishes in a woman. That's what the Bible says. That which is very precious in who? In the sight of God. That God loves that beauty, that inner beauty of a woman. God appreciates it. To God, it is of a great price. Why? Because he's the one. God has hidden that gem. He has hidden that ornament. It's in the heart of a woman. That ornament that he cherishes, that ornament that is precious to him, he has hidden it in the heart of a woman. And the Bible says that it is precious to him. So when that part is affected, it, 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 is, it also affects your relationship with God. It affects your trust. You start to have trust issues, not only with people, but also with God. You start to have confidence issues. God created you to be confident, but because of what is happening inside, you start to have confident issues. Hallelujah. It is of a great price to God. God loves it and men appreciate it. But the Bible says it has to be adorned. You have to put it on. It has to be worn. But some ladies have lost it because of pain and betrayal. And because of bad man choices. But let me tell you people, it can be worn again. It can be rediscovered. That gem can sparkle again. That gem can shine again. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's giving us a secret of how is it that old marriages were not breaking. Why is it that those relationships, although they went through a tough time, they were not breaking? Amen. That, you know, Sarah was an old woman. You know, 75. You know, but... Abraham was afraid that somebody can take Sarah. It's not just about her body. The guy could not imagine Sarah with another man. And when a man gets, your husband gets to a place where he can, or the guy you're dating, he cannot imagine you out of his life with another person. He'll marry you quickly. I mean, he'll go to pastor and say, pastor, eh, which date is open? Why? There is a chord you've struck in him. There is a place you have touched in his heart. And he cannot imagine living without you. <laughs> Praise God. It's the inner beauty. Sarah was so beautiful inside. So supportive to that guy. Can you imagine if your, your man comes to you and tells me, babe, tunayanda, tunahama. We are going somewhere across the wilderness. Tunayanda wapi, misi jui, kifika, takwambia. And then you say, okay. Is that what you'd say? No more chama, no more friends, no more what? Is that what you'd say? No, no. But Sarah was so trusting. Say, okay. Look at Sarah. This guy 
waits for a son for 25 years and then he goes takes him to the mountain to kill him and then comes back to the same woman and Isaac he say mummy 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 daddy alkoda ta kuniwa and Sarah still continues in that marriage <laughs> i'm not saying you you remain in toxic relationships but what i'm saying is that there's something about Abraham that Sarah knew Even in something like that Sarah was still willing to continue in a relationship with Abraham. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> that inner beauty is what Bible calls virtue. In the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 it is called virtue. The Bible says that this virtue is what causes a woman to be more valuable than rubies he says there is no precious stone there is no wealth on earth that you can compare this kind of a woman with the bible says her worth is far above rubies it's called virtue and the bible says if you continue he says that the heart of her husband or the heart of her man trust her praise the name of jesus yeah he trust her more than rubies what is it that destroys it what is it that affects that inner beauty bad choices somebody say bad bad choices and especially in relationships that is why friends i know you've been believing god you've been waiting on god but don't rush i tell you this the truth in love don't rush and fall in love with open eyes one as if you were son kuna maswali unafaa kuuliza na si vibaya kuuliza mm swali ni kitu ya kukadhirisha mtu you know si vibaya kuli <laughs> amen hallelujah make the right choices especially as relationships are concerned number 2 i will not be labor that point number 2 don't allow people to set your value to set your worth don't allow people to tell you who you are because they can only describe you as they see you they do not know who you truly are they don't know who god created you to be and there are ladies sometimes who have been in relationships where men have talked down on them men have oppressed them with words men have uh, have have said the negative and 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 you know hat breaking things to them is because they really did not know how to estimate value hallelujah when you come as a gift into a relationship and that man can be able to see the value of this gift all the time that you relate with that guy he's going to handle you like a gift but if you are so valuable and you are so priceless your value is and your worth is greater than rubies and then you fall into the hands of a guy who doesn't even know the difference be, or, or between gold and and copper he doesn't know the difference between what is valuable he can't tell the difference between a diamond and a piece of rock that is where abuse comes in hallelujah That's where abuse comes in. But when you're in a place where somebody in a relationship where somebody can tell this this woman is of great worth. This woman is incomparable. This woman is a gift because you've taken time to develop yourself. You've taken time to know who you are. You are the, you there's a way you carry yourself like a person who knows themselves. Hallelujah. So when you move into that relationship that person will have to, their mindset about you will have to move to where you are because you take care of yourself amen because you're confident because you know who you are in god you know what you carry you know who lives in the new you know what you can deliver you know what you can do praise the name of jesus hallelujah hey you know the other day i was looking at a document i saw a document somewhere it was an auctioneer's document and i was seeing what was written in that document and i said surely these guys man 
beautiful bed. Wameandika 10k. Kitanda ya 10k ni zile za boarding. Ama a beautiful sofa set 10k. A beautiful Android TV. Because they don't they underestimate things. Be careful ladies. Not to fall into the hands of a person who cannot estimate your worth. They don't understand what you bring. Can I tell you something? If you are relating with a guy who really knows how to estimate your worth, they will think twice before they let you go. Who wants to lose a precious thing? Who wants to lose something that is so valuable? And there are ladies here who have been hurt in relationships only because they fell into the hands of a person who doesn't know what they have. God gives them a gift. In fact, some of those relationships were godly. Ni Mungu alikuwa amefanya, si ndio? Yeah, it's God. God, a guy prayed and said, I think it's time. And God gave them a wife. And God gave them a lady. But because as they were praying for a wife, they did not know how to estimate the worth of a wife. So when the wife comes, they mishandle. And they go, mishandle her, and then they are out there believing God for another one. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Every time God gives us a gift, he looks at how we handle the gift. That's why the Bible says that you should dwell with your wives or with a woman according to understanding, lest your prayer should be hindered. That a woman can hinder prayer. So, ask your friend, ask your neighbor, who is your, your, your sister, who is setting your value? Yeah. Who is he that has determined your price tag? Don't sell yourself short. Who is setting your value? Who is setting your worth? The Bible says that you are more precious. Your worth is greater than rubies. Finally, who are you listening to? Because words are important. Words are very, very important. That is why the Bible says concerning Jesus. He says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and has cleansed her with the word. That's the, that's the power of words. That words can take away blemishes. Words can cause somebody who was not confident to step out in confidence. Oh, words can be able to make a woman blossom and shine and sparkle. Words are very important. But ladies, who are you listening to? What are they saying? Because degrading, negative, oppressive words can cause a valuable woman of worth to feel like she's nothing. It can make her feel like she's the worthless, the most worthless thing on the earth just because of words. But if you fall into the right relationship and get the right words, you can walk like you are the queen on earth. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And let me tell you, we have those extremes of men. Kuna wanaume wanasema ukiambia wife yake yeye ni mrembo atataringa because yeye ana intimidate wana kuringa. Hata kiringa si ni wako. But the others who think that when they talk down on women, that's when they have power and control over them. Those men are out there. And some of you girls have been in the hands of such Praise God. And as I'm talking, some of you can remember a name or can remember a character or can remember a jama. When you think about them, you shudder because of what they took you through. So when you're praying, you're telling God, oh God, I'm ready, I'm ready for marriage, but please, usinipatia kama ule. Not like that one. Because they mishandled you. They didn't even appreciate you. You tried to blossom and beautify their life, but they did not appreciate. 
I pray that God will give you somebody who appreciates your value. Let me say it again. I pray that God will give you, if you're single, I pray that God will give you somebody who re- appreciates your true worth. Because you're a woman of worth. Somebody shout and say, Amen. And if you're here and you're married, I pray that God will open the eyes of that man. That that man will know who he is married to. That that man will see a gift in you. That that man will see that God gave him a woman whose worth is greater than rubies in Jesus' name. And God is able to turn the heart of that person. And that man is able to become a man that appreciates what you do, appreciates who you do are, and appreciates what you offer in that marriage. Praise the name of Jesus. Because one of the frustrations of women is not being appreciated. Trying, trying, and doing, and doing. And it is in the Bible. The Bible says that there is a woman in the Bible who was bringing forth sons, son after son. Finally, she said, oh, I'm going to give him this, and, uh, this other son. And now the love of my husband will be for me. You remember that story? One of the maids of, of, of Jacob trying to win the favor of the man through childbirth. I've given him three boys. He must love me. No, no, no. The guy was focused on another direction. Are you getting? So a woman needs help to wear it. A woman needs a man who can polish this gem. This ornament, it's an ornament. Somebody who can be able to polish it and take care of that inner beauty by giving her the space to sparkle. You brothers who are here, allow her. Allow her to sparkle. Allow her to shine. Nagini muki shine muna tupatia glory. When you sparkle, remember to send where the glory belongs. Sindio. Yeah, I told, us, I told you we have ego. Manas, if you have ego. Now your ego in atakaga kunasiwa. Hey, my man is such a king, man. My man is such. Atakama jafanya kitu. We speak by faith. Prophesy into the future. <laughs> Prophesy into the future. Your words have power. Praise the name of Jesus. So a woman needs that space. A woman can be a gem and an ornament, but she is confined. She's pressed down. If you look at her walking, yeah, you will think she has nothing within her. It's because she has been denied the space, the liberty, the room, because she has not fallen into the hands of a person who will say, hey, baby, you're a gift, and polish that, that, that value and polish and allow her to shine and sparkle. And that is what love does. Please, ladies, what I pray for you this evening, or this morning, sorry, it's morning, amen. I don't know why I'm thinking about evening, but this morning is because I preached yesterday in the evening. I pray that God will give you the eye, especially the single ones, those who are dating. God will give you the ability to discern between camouflage, love, and true love. Yeah. That he will give you the ability to know what is in the heart of that guy. So that you are not wounded. Praise the name of Jesus. When you sparkle ladies, you sparkle with gentleness. But the Bible says that gentleness can disarm a king. It can disarm a king. You, look, you read at the Bible, look at the Bible, the kings of the Bible. How they were moved by ladies who had that gentleness. But Sheba, the Bible says the Ad- Adonijah wanted to steal and install himself as the king. But Sheba just walked into the room of David, gently talked to him. By the time that conversation was over, King David had called the, king, the, the, the prophet and the priest and told the priest, when you're coming, please come with a horn of oil and go and take Solomon but Sheba's son and make him king is a woman who intervened. Hallelujah. That gentle spirit is sweet. Amen. Can I tell you? It is that spirit. It is more, than, it's more the heart than the body that wins a man. 
I don't know how many times I have to re- repeat this. Can I, can I tell you something? Can I give you some man secrets? When you start dating a man, how a man feels around you matters. If the man feels safe, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, his heart trusts her. Are you getting? If the man feels safe, the guy is marrying you. But if he feels this is going to be a war zone, he'll start to duck. He'll start to give excuses. Because there is that which really wins a man. Is that gentle spirit. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. That is what has caused the man to trust in women. The wife. It's that gentle spirit. That is what will cause a, 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 a man to go and just take a lady and say, you know what, I'll take you to my pastor to the premarital counseling. The lady was a stranger. Until they had coffee several times and said, You, I can't leave you. Let's go to my pastor. Praise God. Is is that quietness, that gentle spirit? How how would a man, how does your husband, if you're married, how, how does he feel in your presence? Can I tell you, men are strong, they are protective, they offer security, but they need protection. Na you, 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 you lady wants to get married, that you will see potential. That you will get to know potential. Because you can be waiting for one who is already made it. Na, our bishop says, that one who has already made it is married. Uyo yuko na garimbili na nyumba, eh? Uyo yuko married. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yeah. Where well, you come married? But get your own man and believe in them. Be a part of their story. Everything God has given us, my wife knows how it came. She has a story of every phase in our life. She knows the battles we have had to fight. And she has laughed with me in our successes and in our joys. Praise the name of Jesus. The God. Yeah. Ladies, because of your strength and your power, sometimes God will give you potential rather than a person who is already making it. So that you can contribute to making him. The Bible says, put on, adorn yourself. Put on that spirit, that quiet spirit. Put on that inner beauty. Don't allow it to be covered. Don't allow it to be stolen. Don't allow it to be taken away. Put it on. Because that's where the true strength of a woman lies. The true beauty. For some, as I have said, it has been shredded, torn, tattered. But it can be restored. 